let's imagine that our goal is to uh, bake this donut with a lot of sweets, with a lot of decoration. Uh, but it will not make any sense if, for example, you don't know how to bake this donut itself. So uh, first of all, uh, you need to uh, know how to do it. And second, you will like to make extra features. This is the proper way of developing MVP solution. I also like and want to share with you this picture. Uh, this is a really great example how build and how not to build minimum viable product. So our goal is to build a car. And this is the great choice, yeah, to start from scooter, uh, bike, etc. So at each iteration step, we have some finite and completed uh, product and uh, we can use it. And for example, uh, this is not the good choice because let's imagine something went wrong and stage three and we can't proceed. Uh, there is no option to proceed to build a car. Just all of the, our investments and time spending uh, will be in vain. So like not really great choice. Okay, this is like small introduction and um, uh, to wrap up everything that uh, we discussed about POC and MVP, um, from what to start, I gathered for you in like uh, two questions. You need to answer two questions first. Do you know uh, where to start from? So basically, do you have any idea? If no, if you don't have any idea and you didn't face with this task and you don't have like any ideas how to proceed with this better to start with poc invest some time in research if you know where to start answer the following question uh, does the goal and steps clear so perhaps clear and you did this task before and uh, you completely know how to solve it that's great you can start with mvp so you can engage um, front end and uh, as developers yet to proceed like to develop this product. If no, mm, again, better to proceed with PRC. Okay, let's move further. Uh, I want to show you this diagram. Maybe someone uh, already faced with it. It's called Squeeze Dam Process. Um, what is this? It's uh, the process or how this project works. The main idea here, uh, I will uh, describe you, but the main idea here to understand that this project, it's not sequential development project. Like for example, developing mobile application when we know in advance that one step will be after another step, etc. So data science project, it's iterative. And um, I really highly recommend for newcomers in this area to invest five, 10 minutes um, and to describe it to the client. Uh, you, uh, it's better that client will, client will know how this project works and you all will be on the same page from the scratch. Um, so uh, I just like, yeah, I want to describe it firstly to you. So the, the first point is business understanding. I told that it's crucially important to completely understand what you are developing. Uh, if you have question, ask this question to the client. From the uh, ex from my experience, each client is really ready to share this experience, and they are open minded. Just ask. Uh, let's imagine then we go to the next step: data understanding. So, client provide you data. And you have you look at this data, yeah, and you have some question. Maybe something is not clear, uh, something is mismatched with business understanding. Don't hesitate. Come back to the client. Ask this question. So this is like iterative process from uh, business and data understanding stage. Okay, let's imagine that it's clear. Uh, go further. We have step of data preparation. Uh, it's common story for the data scientist. Uh, for uh, doesn't matter what problem you're solving, you need to prepare data for modeling. Okay, uh, let's go further. Uh, you selected, let's say, uh, some baseline models and some alternative models. 
and uh, do some experiments here. You notice that something went wrong. You can go back to this stage. And again, it's like circle somehow. Uh, OK, let's imagine you choose uh, the best model and uh, want to proceed with it. You will go to the next stage of evaluation. Um, it's important to know that on this stage, you need to test your model on completely new data. So this data shouldn't be in training. This data shouldn't be in testing when you tune in hyperparameters or like uh, uh, some metrics uh, or uh, evaluate some metrics. So this is new completely data on evaluation step. And you need to validate whether your model works or not. So uh, if it works, uh, my congratulations to you and you can go to the deployment stage uh, and your model uh, can be deployed to the production. Uh, if no, it can be something wrong at this stage. I suggest to go back to business understanding and uh, let's discuss one more. So like, the main conclusion here uh, and you and your client should know that um, data science project it's different it's not a sequential project and uh, we all need to be on the same page here okay so let's move further uh, and as uh, all of the different project uh, we need somehow to estimate it and if for example on one side we have let's say some mobile application where more or less it's clear that we have some specific operation system we need to add some buttons etc in this how properly estimated if you don't know results in advance so you don't know whether it will work what accuracy you will have but you need to do it and uh, it's frequently asked question uh, so please estimate it uh, I want to give you a few recommendations here, uh, what basically I'm using in my practice. First recommendation is um, be sure that you can solve the core task. Start with POC if you are not sure. Uh, because, for example, if uh, the idea is develop mobile application based on AI, uh, and this main core task cannot be solved, there is no need to gather all other de developers at all because we are not solving the main uh, functionality that we have. So uh, ask clients to start with POC if you are not sure. It's fine completely. Second, uh, no commitment on specific, num uh, on specific numbers in metrics. I know it can be the case when client ask you something like this. Uh, please promise me that uh, you will have 95% accuracy. No, don't do this, please. Um, you don't know results in advance. You can describe it to the client. Uh, if, for example, you faced with situation that uh, client want specific numbers really really want what you can do uh, you for example uh, on first stage select several models that you are going to try and usually these models um, are tested by someone uh, on open source data sets uh, and of course they received some metrics so you can share uh, you can see look client um, we uh, get these numbers from on this data set, but we are not sure uh, how it will be on your data because we didn't try and model need to be developed and it's fine. Uh, the third point, provide the client with the project risk and limitation. It's crucially important because, um, for example, uh, let's imagine that you test your POC or some experiment you are doing with, um, let's say, uh, audio files with uh, some quality and it looks good to you so you uh, are sure that it will work in production but when it's becoming uh, to the broad data you see that it's completely different audio files and for example there is a lot of background noise and uh, uh, your approach is not working here so better to write it in risk and better to be on the same page that 
if something changed and if something made wrong, you can refer to this point that you provided to the client in the very beginning. Uh, the next, explain this project flow to the client. Uh, like I described to you, so I suggest to describe, uh, describe it to the client. So we will be on the same page. Uh, the next, more decomposition, more understanding of how to achieve the goal. So if you tried something, if you have more understanding, uh, it's really great because first of all, you uh, have more, uh, you will be more confident in your estimates and achieving the goal. This is the main point here. As much details you will have uh, how to reach your goal as better. Uh, and the six, clarify the necessity of runtime. Usually it's important, but client doesn't tell about it. It's true story. We will cover it today a bit more uh, later on. So uh, if client don't tell about runtime, it doesn't mean that it doesn't matter. So better to clarify on your own. And let's go further. And yeah, wrapping up this, uh, like, part of estimation of providing expectation uh, i want to give you some suggestion how to deliver results to the client first of all um, demo and visualization are the best options uh, you can use different approaches here but just imagine that if you provide a result to the client in some table like this otherwise you can provide in some plots uh, these plots, of course, can give you some insights, like this dot, you can ask client, maybe something wrong, maybe some anomalies in data, or maybe it's some pattern that pay attention. So this is much more better in comparison to tables if we are talking about presenting results. Uh, the next, if you have a small subset of client's data, use it for demo. I want to stop and like, here and uh, describe it better. So uh, let's imagine that client, not imagine, but client has uh, his own business and usually uh, people is very passionate about it. Uh, and when you show something abstractive, I mean like you apply a model on some open source data, it's one story. Completely another story when client, uh, let's say client don't provide you a lot of data, let's say client provide you three pictures and nothing more. But when clients see some insights from you uh, on their own data, it's completely different story. Uh, you will get more trust from the clients, definitely. So even you have a small amount of data, I highly recommend to use it for demo to the client. Uh, make sure that clients understand your point. Um, you know, we all uh, work in, in data science area where it's really easy to lose people. I hope that I'm not losing you, but it's really to lose people because um, we have here a lot of technical details uh, and really often uh, client is not technical as we are. So we uh, have to uh, describe complicated stuff in easy words. words. So um, make sure that client understand your point. Ask question, ask uh, if it was clear, or maybe you should paraphrase. It's fine, but it's better to do um, each time uh, to avoid any miscommunication in the future, uh, because it's really even worse if you will have it. And the last recommendation, uh, you can provide report to the client with all details of your work. It's really great point because um, when you uh, finish uh, your meet, you can share this report and client can go through these details, uh, remind something. And you know, even I faced the situation when I provide report to the client and client use it for uh, their investors and uh, really was uh, appreciated that we have uh, that, that we provided this report so this is a good tone i would say and uh, uh, my recommendations for you okay so uh, let's move further and uh, i want you uh, i want to let you know about uh, popular ai directions that we have right now 
I'm pretty sure that uh, almost everything is already familiar to you. Uh, I will stop on the most interesting one, including again, optimization, computer vision, NLP time series. So I don't want to spend time much more on this slide right now and move further. Mm. Yeah, so um, here, before we uh, dig in uh, deeper into uh, all details, I want to provide you some business case examples. Uh, first, uh, let's imagine that you are dealing with a business owner who is cafe chain owner. And of course, a main goal of this owner to support and maintain the business, uh, like to develop it. Uh, and this owner came to you with two uh, questions. First, uh, he wants to know the number of products that will be sold. Mm -hmm. And second, understand the performance of employees, who is uh, good performing, who is not so good. Uh, as input data, client provide to you a uh, SQL database with a bunch of tables, connection between these tables, so like uh, a lot of table, table or data. Uh, what is expected solution here? So if client won't ask no number of product that will be sold, what expected solution? Okay, client, we can predict amount of products, not a problem. Uh, if client want to understand the performance of employee, we can suggest to develop some kind of employees rating based on sold products, based on um, tips or something what we have in the data. Uh, but I really suggest you uh, to look at this task, uh, at each task that you have in your uh, life more deeper and uh, try to think uh, wider. What else you can suggest? So considering this example, uh, I want to say that like few thoughts came into my mind. Uh, first, uh, you can uh, suggest uh, to develop some recommendation for the best sold products. So um, client will know what is going like in pairs. So uh, employees can like, apply cross-selling uh, and increase um, benefits and revenue. Uh, the next point that you can suggest, it's anomalies detection. For example, in terms of employees analysis, you can, uh, uh, unfortunately, some employees is cheating and we can try to detect these anomalies in our data. This is the idea. Uh, the next, popularity of products per hour's day. This is great point for uh, this is great point for marketing strategy. Perhaps to apply some advertisement during uh, specific days or specific weekend or lunch time, some kind of this. Uh, you can suggest UI dashboard, so a client will be able to see uh, data in real, in real time, uh, some points and plots that uh, client want from you. And another idea, it's clustering analysis. So uh, having data, we can uh, have some groups, so customers based by groups uh, and identify this behavior inside these groups. And again, for example, to focus on marketing strategy. So uh, try to suggest, perhaps you will plan with the client uh, next iteration, perhaps you will change a vector of direction. So uh, be open-minded and uh, think wider. Um, I want to give you another example. Uh, it's NLP uh, case, so it's related to the text uh, problem. Uh, let's imagine another business owner uh, who has product and uh, the main uh, goal of this person, of course, to sell the product and provide customer support. Let's imagine that customer support uh, via chats because we need to have somewhere text in this business case. So it will be in the chats. Uh, and this client came to you with two requests. First, it's have understanding of employee performance 
again. Uh, and second, you help in providing services uh, more effectively. So we propose to the client uh, three stuff, sentiment analysis, text summarization, and keyword detection. Why? <laughs> How it will help? Uh, let's try to understand and uh, wait understand how to present it basically so sentiment analysis it's models uh, that based on text can identify emotion and tone of conversation so we can detect some negative cases for example positive negative neutral but interesting negative and for example try to understand who is from employees have more negative conversation try to Mm, like make some analysis based on these sentiments that we get from the model text summarization so uh, idea behind is to summarize all conversation example uh, it's really frequent that a customer came to the chat support and reference to uh, some um, problem that uh, he or she referred before so i talked with someone a few days ago uh, and this agent need to go to the database to find this conversation to find this ticket to read to understand so it takes a lot of time and customer becoming becoming even more angry uh, there is nothing good here uh, so this summarization will help to speed up this process definitely uh, keywords detection. So this is the idea to detect keywords from uh, conversation. Yes, yeah, sorry for <laughs> repeating myself, but uh, from these keywords we can uh, uh, we can select or not select. We can apply some text uh to this conversation and if for example uh some problem was already solved by some agents and another agent faced with this problem it will be easily find but some text so uh because uh there is like some searching rule here uh so um yeah this is another uh, like idea uh another point of view um how to deal with uh, NLP with text uh, task and these examples we have a lot a lot but like for uh, some understanding I hope I provided you these ideas okay so um, I want to proceed with the next uh, point uh, how to start if for example we have here um, specialist who is uh, uh, don't knew anything in data science area uh, first of all i want to say that it's better to start with tabular data uh, not to start with pictures videos etc uh, better to start with tabular and proceed with something else today i will not cover like detailed instruction what you should do i will mostly focus on some insights some uh, new interesting stuff in each area what we have right now but i'm pretty sure that you will handle like uh, this task and everything will be fine uh, so tabular data uh, it looks like this so we have table uh, with a lot of columns, a lot of rows, and different information, different values here. Uh, it could be um, it could be a Boolean variable, it could be some numbers, it could be text, wherever we want. Uh, so this is how it looks like. Uh, usually, uh, not it, it's not finite list, but usually we are dealing with tabular data three main tasks. It's regression, classification, and clusterization. Uh, regression. This task uh, is for predicting some specific number. Uh, price, sales, units, some like, I mean, number, uh, like decimal, some kind of this. Classification. This task is based on um, assigning some class to the observation uh, for example like disease detection whether COVID true or COVID false or sentiment let's say positive negative neutral or wherever we want so some finite number of classes clusterization 
Clusterization, it's uh, we don't know amount of classes, but we want to group our data in some specific amount of groups. Like we discussed previously, customer groups, detection. So yeah, wrap up, uh, wrap up people by behaviors. Um, it's true story <laughs> that expectations and reality is different. And uh, we are expecting that we will not have missing data and all variables are well known and data is clean and everything is fine. And our goal is to apply model and tune it. But unfortunately, reality is different. And uh, of course, I exaggerated, exaggerated in this example, but it's really frequently that uh, not understandable the name of columns. Uh, not understandable why uh, numbers in mix win with text and what does it mean MFSM? So, a lot of question about data. Uh, yeah, and like wrapping up this table uh, classical table or data task, I would say that uh, the main and the first important step is uh, data understanding. So, all of this unknown stuff should be completely understandable at this stage so you will have you need to have full understanding if it's not clear ask to the client uh, because if you are not sure in the data um, i have doubts if you uh, if it's possible to develop a really valuable model uh, the next step is data cleaning and preparation. Uh, yeah, you need to develop and clean, uh, you, you need to clean data before modeling. Feature engineering, it's a great and interesting uh, step. Uh, you can generate new features, you can get new insights, you can discuss it with the client. Uh, so like all experiments is up to you and it's really interesting uh, stage in uh, their tasks. Modeling. Uh, from modeling step, you can back, uh, you can go back to the or feature engineering or data cleaning again. We are working with iterative process. It's not sequential, so it's fine. And evaluation, so validate data on new data set. Uh, we discussed about it today um, and make sure that you are not overfitting and uh, everything working as you expected. Uh, I want today provide you uh minor uh like small amount of uh examples uh how basic not small amount some ideas for improving results so what you can consider uh first of all uh i suggest to uh look at the data from different perspective for example let's imagine that you have postal code uh it's finite number of uh postal codes uh and one of the idea is transpose this data uh, using one hot encoding to some kind of uh, this where each column will be some unique postal code uh, and one zero if it exists or doesn't exist um, it's like um, ordinary solution but let's imagine that you have uh, let's say 100 unique values here so from one columns you will create 100 columns and let's imagine that you have similar different columns like this. So you will have really a huge amount of data, amount of columns, and I'm not sure that it will be really helpful for your model. Alternative idea here could be the following. Uh, let's try to plot. Let's try to plot it in the map. Mm, and you can see some kind of these results. So uh, you can see, I even have, let me show you, I even have animation. Uh, you no. Just a second. Ah, here it is. Yeah. So uh, let's imagine that you plot map uh, and uh, you can see it's more details and you can see that, okay, one postal code is far away and it's nothing correlated with my data. Uh, and most likely it's anomalous. Uh, so this is completely different picture. Uh, and uh, the idea is to, uh, the idea is, um to look at the data from different perspective 
Okay, uh, another another uh, option here. Uh, you can add third party data uh, to your data to enrich the model. For example, uh, let's imagine that you have column city. So you can find out general information or general data sets uh, with extra information and most likely it will be valuable for your data. So you can uh, get new insights from third party data. One more uh, idea, if, for example, you are working with text, um, don't start to get rid of this text, even though you have uh, a lot of um, numerical columns, uh, you can look at this from different perspective. Uh, you can extract from this text some like uh, locations, metro station, phone numbers, uh, some key phrases and use all of this information as new features and get new insights from it. So this is like one of the idea how to um, mm, enrich yeah, and get new insights from your model. Okay, so uh, let's go further to the uh, natural language processing. Uh, this is uh, basically area working with text uh, I want to like, briefly stop here and uh, tell you that I found out a really great research. I hope you will have uh, this presentation and you can click link if you are interested uh, to read more. But the main idea here that um, in 2020, uh, this is amount of investment in NLP and we are expecting a huge growth and uh, considering the amount of project that uh, uh, we are working with, NLP is quite huge. Mm, so uh, yeah, this area will be definitely growth. And in this research, uh, they cover in two uh, key growing direction. First is a cloud-based solution like AWS, um, GCP, so like temporary use some NLP solution. And second is uh, increasing usage of smart devices to facilitate smart environments. What does it mean? It means that we all get used to uh, Siri usage, or for example, if you want to find out something in YouTube uh, when we turn on TV, uh, we don't want to tap it. Uh, we want to just say, and it's much easier. So yeah, it's still NLP, and uh, all of the stuffs will be even developed more and more. Uh, in NLP, we have also like a lot of directions. Um, some of them we will cover, uh, but it's yeah, it's not finite list. But let's move further. Uh, I want to give you um, intuition behind text, so don't scare me, please, about it. Uh, and uh, let's imagine that you have text. Uh, the like really uh, toy example how it works first of all we need to split text uh, with punctation or without punctation it's different story but idea is to split text and then to each unique uh, uh, unique value assign some token uh, of course there is like different options and for splitting and for tokenization but they, the high level idea to convert this text to the uh, digits and then we can work with this digit sequential so uh, so it looks i guess uh, easier if someone didn't work with uh, ha haven't worked with text yet so hope um, you will have like more understanding that it's not really complicated under the hood uh, about NLP approaches, this I want to say that um, generally, um, I want to say that we have two main direction, classical NLP and NLP with deep learning, with neural network. I want to say that these uh, that are both text classification, keyword text similarity can be solved with both approaches. But you can see that some of the tasks um, I have doubts if we can solve it with classical approaches. Maybe yes, but uh, it will not be relevant uh, in real world, uh, world examples. So right now, main focus is on deep learning uh, and model uh, trained with neural network produce really great uh, example and we can 
um, enrich this model with our custom data. So like this is really this area is developed much more right now. Uh, here I want to give you uh, intuition for solving NLP task. Uh, just like to have some basic understanding. So let's imagine that you have task to generate summaries for given input text. Uh, you need to understand that first, training an NLP model from scratch is not really efficient on practice because it takes a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of investment, a lot of labeled data, and it's really, really hard and uh, will take enormous time and money to do. Transfer learning and pre-trained models is a better choice. Pre-trained models means that someone already trained it and you can try to use on your case. And transfer learning, uh, it's use pre-trained model, add your data and just like to continue training. So to enrich already pre-trained model with your custom data. It's a really uh, one of the best choice right now what I can see in terms of NLP. And uh, the third point that I want to say that data set used for pre-trained NLP model matters. For example, uh, you chose NLP model uh, trained on Wikipedia, like general text, and you have the main task in medicine. So most likely it will not work, uh, like 90% that it will, will not uh, produce great results. Uh, so try to find, even if you're focusing about pre-trained model, trying to find a model that was pre-trained on relevant data set. It really matters for this task. Uh, and I want to uh, give you a couple of examples of new interesting direction of NLP. First is uh, summarization. Um, even like one and two years ago, extractive summary approach uh, was like everywhere and abstractive was really rare and uh, not produce good results. But right now, situation is opposite completely. So extractive summary approach, uh, the core intuition behind it, when we have text, we split text by sentence, we score each sentence and apply some rating, and select the most relevant, but output will contain the original sentences. Uh, and most likely it will be out of context. Abstractive summary approach can paraphrase and can generate new sentences. So on input, uh, you have, let's say, 10 sentence output can be one with paraphrased and like shortly uh, summary of this like text. Uh, right now, this is more pop popular and it produces, like from my subjective point of view, uh, produce really great results. Um, um, but several years ago, it was completely opposite. Uh, I want to give you one more interesting direction. Uh, perhaps someone from you heard about it. Uh, image captioning. It's really interesting. So idea here is the following. We have image as input, we are detecting uh, objects here, and then we are generating some description uh, in text. So it could be uh, useful for uh, some automatic creation of text or description by the photo. Interesting point is annotation for blind people. Uh, so we can convert it to the voice. Uh, and like describe to the blind people what is showing here. Uh, so pay attention to it if you are interested. And uh, again, we have some research here. If you have presentation, you can uh, go to the link and share uh, and look this information in more detail. Uh, some helpful resources I gathered for you. Uh, it's Hug and Face, a really well-known platform for NLP. You can use some GitHub repositories as well as open source packages and third-party APIs, just like AWS, GCP, or some external APIs uh, to start with the, and basically to proceed with working in NLP. 
let's go further. I want to uh, tell you some intuition and ideas about computer vision. Computer vision is area in uh, AI for working with images and pictures. Uh, so this is classical task for computer vision, cat or dog. Uh, and let's try to understand how to detect whether cat or dog in the picture. Uh, here I uh, gathered uh, popular direction for computer vision. Some of them we will cover today, but it's again, it's not finished list, but what is uh, uh, popular right now, I would say like this. Um, again, uh, we uh, I, I described to you what text, how text work in uh, models, uh, some intuition about pictures. So pictures need to be converted to the uh, uh, to the numbers because we are working with numbers. Uh, and how it looks uh, behind when you read like ordinary GPG or PNG. Uh, picture, it looks like three uh, layered matrix. When two dimension is high and width in pixels, and uh, the next one is three channels RGB. Mm, uh, I, I put here example like all the picture three channels. It's usually it can be a different amount, but usually three channels: red, green, blue. All of our pictures that we are uh, looking in our like fonts, uh, most of them are con uh, contains these three layers, and based on intensity of each colors, we are uh, achieving this result. Uh, yeah. Uh, if, for example, uh, you don't know anything about computer vision, so you don't have any idea, but you want to start, this is like flow that I would rather suggest you. So first of all, uh, I recommend to read images data. Look at the properties and data you have. So try to look at the pictures from different perspective. Uh, second review and understand neural network components what is layers what is activation function uh, how neural networks works and what has uh, some theoretical knowledge then review and understand the logic behind popular neural network architecture uh, because quite often in new modern uh, architectures we use um, some components uh, developed by well-known uh, neural network architecture. So yeah, it's really uh, great to understand and to apply it. Then uh, if you are deciding what to choose as your first task in computer vision, I would recommend to choose image classification. Uh, that's what I was talking, whether cat or dog, hot dog, not hot dog. So uh, all of this like stuff to classify pictures. Uh, then, uh, first, uh, when you choose this task, I would recommend to write and train your first custom uh, model on ImageNet uh, data sets. Uh, this is data set really well known with a lot of classes uh, already labeled, so you can uh, and fine tune uh, the model and uh, train your own custom model. So try to do it. Uh, and as well, you can use pre-trained model and apply transfer learning abroad that I was talking before, that use some pre-trained model, add your data to uh, train it a bit more. Uh, and like, you can compare this point with the previous one and understand uh, how it looks like. So this is really great steps to start. Uh, I want to give you uh, as well, business case examples. Uh, so let's imagine client came to you and asked, okay, please, I want to detect person, but I don't have data for training. So please do something I really want, but don't knew anything. Uh, you can answer to the client, sorry, without data, we are not able to help you. Uh, but I would say that it's not really a great uh, choice to proceed. It's better to uh, follow the following steps. So first of all, you can say that, okay, if you not uh, uh, don't have data at all, 
try to find suitable pre-trained model. Uh, maybe it will be suitable for your case. If you have small amount of data, uh, try to apply transfer learning. Uh, if it's possible to gather a lot of data, you can allow you to develop your custom model. So try to give some options here. Regarding new technologies, uh, LIDAR, it's really interesting. Uh, maybe uh, someone from you have already this uh, camera in your mobile phone. Idea of this camera, uh, it has laser uh, and uh, output it's not 2d pictures like we have it's 3d uh, picture with um, information where lights is going from so all really really plenty of information here from lidar and it's uh, like really high developed right now and like new modern interesting technology uh, GANs uh GANs, it's really also an interesting neural network in computer vision the main idea behind that we have input picture and we can modify this picture so uh, apply a smile or change race or hair uh, hairstyle or haircut or uh, something in appearance. Uh, it can be useful in different areas and starting from generating new data samples for your data sets and photo editing and face animation. So uh, this is really interesting and you can also pay some attention to these technologies. Uh, human pose estimation. This task that we started today, uh, idea here is to detect key points from the uh, video. Uh, it can be useful for some fitness app, for example, to uh, identify whether you properly doing some exercises. So yeah, uh, one of the idea for computer vision. And the last um, chapter about optimization, uh, I will try to uh, cover it like, uh, uh, briefly, I don't have like this is the last point, but really important as well. Uh, so this is common story of our life. <laughs> uh, client ask you to detect cats, for example, and told you that runtime is not important. Okay, uh, data scientists uh, applied this algorithm, developed it, and uh, everything is working. But after a while, client came to you and told, okay, I want to detect 1000 cats in one second. Why is it so slow? Uh, you need to know that uh, runtime is important every time. Even client is not telling about it. Uh, after a while, client came to you and asked why is it so slow. Think about speed during development. Better to write optimized code from scratch. Use GPU and CPU resources on maximum. Uh, really often um, we have project running on AWS instances or GCP. Uh, and uh, if you use, let's say, one core uh, M1 16, it's not a good choice. If we use 20% of GPU capacity among 100%, it's not a good choice because we are already paying for it and uh, we have to use, and it's really great tone to use as maximum as possible. Multiprocessing is a great option for parallelization. So apply it, you will speed up definitely. And write project with the pipeline running approach. I know that every, mm, that, uh, when you started the project, uh, a lot of us started from some uh, Jupyter notebook, uh, but when it's becoming bigger and bigger, uh, it will be harder to you to transpose it to pipeline, uh, like running approach for deployment, because it's not possible to deploy Jupyter notebook in the production. So uh, start as much uh, uh, earlier as you can to make it in normal Git repository view. You will save time and make your life easier. Uh, I want to give you some important tricks for writing code here. Auxiliary variables. Um, please don't create a lot of auxiliary variables, especially with heavy tables. 
Um, I know that uh, it's quite often when uh, people read table, then do some modification, save, save in another variable, then merge with something, save in another variable. You will consume a lot of RAM memory. Uh, it's becoming important, so uh, yeah, don't do it, please. For loops, uh, avoid for loop as much as possible. Try to apply vectorized function. Unfortunately, it's not possible to avoid for loops at all, but if you can avoid as much as possible, it's great. Big input tables. Uh, there is uh, arguments in uh, function for reading tables uh, when you can uh, read only necessary columns, for example. And if your table, let's say, really big and have 500 columns and you need only 10, there is no need to read these 500 columns. Data types. Use lightweight data types as maximum as you can. Example, dictionary, uh, weight weighted than data frames. Tuple, weight weighted than list. So if you can to use lightweight, I have pers personally experience, if we have time, I will describe, but not right now. Then uh, uh, ex uh, example is the following, we changed data types and we speed it up in four times. So this is really matters. Uh, and the last is uh, SQL queries, write effective SQL queries. Uh, I want to give you one example here. So uh, look at the right and uh, let's imagine that you have to uh, select some columns from table, join with another table and group by column. So you are aggregating two, uh, two tables and select several columns. Uh, it will fast and this is one action to extract. In opposite, if you do some kind of this, so you select everything from one table. It's a big one, really big one table. Select uh, the same from another one. So you will lose time uh, and memory. Then you will remove uh, some columns. Then you will join. Then you will aggregate to remove amounts. So I'm pretty sure if, if you have uh, a lot of data, really a lot of, it will slow down in times in comparison to this one. So better to write effective queries uh, from the scratch. Uh, in terms of runtime, time, it's definitely true. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's it. Uh, I uh, left you my uh, um, accounts. Yeah, you can write, you can ask questions if you have so. I will be more than happy to reply to you. And I want to say thank you. Thank you for your attention.